Hi, I'm Don, and this is The Hobbyist Geek. Welcome back, y'all. Uh, today is very exciting. I'm actually going to be continuing our Moo Model Transformers journey. Um, after the success of the Opt Optimus Prime model, I kind of went a little overboard and I bought a whole bunch of other Moo models, so I think you're going to be able to expect a lot more of these in the coming weeks uh, and months. Today, we're doing Megatron because Let's face it, what good is an Optimus Prime if you don't have Meg standing next to him? Uh, I can't wait to get started on this. Um, if you recall, the Optimus Prime one took me 31 hours of straight build time, and when you add in cutting all the pieces out of the metal, the editing, and everything else, you're looking at a 40-hour work week, and I do have a regular job. So this is going to be broken up into multiple videos. Uh, I'm anticipating three videos if it's uh, like Optimus we did the torso and head and then the legs and then the arms and cannon so I'm guessing this one's gonna be in the same order I guess we'll have to wait and see but in the meantime let's go ahead and crack this open and see what we got okay so here is the box that Megatron comes in and I mean just look at the detail on this uh, image here I, I really hope the real model looks like that there are some things I'm a little concerned about. Uh, his face right here. I'm really hoping that's a shadow and not black. Uh, I don't remember Megatron ever actually having, you know, a beard or anything like that. Uh, I'm also kind of interested to see how they do some of this detail. If you recall with the um, Optimus Prime model, uh, they had no laser etch detail or different paint apps like this. Um, so, you know, I, I'm wondering if this is two different pieces or if they've found a different way of doing it or if they've just decided to go ahead and add paint apps to the metal sheets. But other than that, this is looking pretty good. I can't wait. Still got the Chinese going on. On the back side here, everything here is in Chinese as well. Now the good news is one of the models that I've purchased actually has all of this in English. So, um, I actually know what some of this stuff means now. This one right here is the number of pieces, 634. That is significantly higher than even Optimus. Optimus, I believe, was at 560 something. So, uh, we're looking at a significant uptick in the number of pieces. I don't know if that means they're going to be smaller pieces or if we're going to actually get some more metal, but there you have it. And this one right here, is the difficulty level, which is in this case nine. Optimus Prime was also a nine, so I really don't anticipate having any major issues. But let's go ahead and get the cellophane off here and see what's inside the box. All right, much like Optimus, it's got a box inside the box. Uh, and what we were just viewing is really just a sleeve. Um, and then inside of this, let's see, okay. Looks like it goes this way. There we go. If. All right. So, I'm guessing this is the instructions. Yep, there we go. The instructions. This is actually a lot smaller and thinner than the instruction set for Optimus. So, more pieces, uh, smaller instruction set. That's interesting. Um, let's see here. Are we going to be building this in the same order? It looks like that would be a no. Based on this, it looks like we're going to be doing the arms first. So it looks like we're going to be doing this a little bit uh, different order here. Uh, we've got our obligatory sales pamphlet. And we've got our metal. Ooh, that is some heavy, heavy metal there. Um... Honestly, it feels like there's more metal than there was for Optimus, which actually makes sense. Let's see if I can find out where this thing opens. There we go. I really like how they package the metal. Um, you know, they, they've got it all combined in this one envelope here, but each one is individually wrapped as well. 
So you can take a look at that. Um, it looks like we are going to get some paint apps this time around. I mean, you can see um, the base of the metal here is black, but we've got a lot of silver in here. We've got some yellow. So it looks like they do have some different paint apps on the metal sheets instead of all of them being a single color. Uh, and then I picked this one up and it's all silver. So, you know, uh, this, wow, look at all of that. That looks awesome. I mean, and I love the way the color pops. I mean, the metallic reds here and the golds. Um, and I really like, I don't know if this is coming out because of the uh, glare from the light there, but uh, how each one of these is actually numbered on the metal sheet. It does make it a little easier when you're cutting things out. So it looks like we have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six full size metal sheets and two half size metal sheets. I believe that actually is significantly more metal than we had with Optimus. I believe it was four and four for Optimus, but um, well, this looks awesome. So why don't we start cutting some pieces out and start getting this guy built.
Okay, so here we are seven and a half hours into the build and we have completed the arms uh, and you know I'm actually mostly happy with these and I'm using this to kind of hold them because this silver really takes fingerprints like you wouldn't believe and I have cleaned these up uh, a bit uh, for this finale bit here but um, let's uh, show you some of the details you know we've got uh, some little yellow pieces here now we do have paint apps, unlike the Optimus, this is one piece of metal with uh, both gold and black paint on it that was not present in the Optimus model. Uh, all of the colors were monotone, uh, as it were. Um, the arm itself seems to be a little bit bigger than Optimus. We'll see when we do a size comparison after we've completed the model. But the arm itself does seem to be a little bit bigger. It's also a lot more plain. You can see we've got this giant space here with no detail of any kind. There is a little bit of uh, laser etching on the detail, but um, for the most part, you know, we've got uh, some wonderful uh, 3D aspects that are just extra pieces of metal that, you know, you have to manipulate. Um, now, there are a couple of issues I've got, like right here. You can see these gold bits here. These are the caps for a couple of pistons. Now the pistons come all the way up through here and we've got two more caps back here. The pistons are solid black so they just meld right in to the background there. And those gold caps uh, and most of the piston itself is hidden under this grate and you're never going to see it. So you know, why did we go through the trouble of building all of that when we just cover it back up? That is a question for the ages. No idea. Um, another item of note, these little uh, gaps here. Now, these were bigger on the Optimus model to kind of indicate that these were different pieces that would fold together as part of the transformation. These gaps, on the other hand, are so small, they're barely noticeable even when you're up close. Uh, and at a distance, of course, they just disappear entirely. I do like this red here on the bicep. Uh, and the elbow itself with the little gear that's in there is actually quite nice. I, I, I really do enjoy that. Uh, the hands went together much like the Optimus hands did and they came out looking uh, really, really good actually. Now for the arms, the cannon here is definitely uh, the masterpiece of this part of the build. And as you can see, there is some laser etch detail here on uh, some of the pieces. This is all one piece except for the red. Okay, uh, everything else is just one piece with that detail laser etched in. Uh, as it was coming together, uh, you know, I was a little disappointed, but the end result is actually far better than I thought it was going to be. Uh, one area that they really could have done better on is actually this centerpiece and how it connects to the ends. Um, they could have put a ring or something in there. Instead, uh, you actually have to manipulate the centerpiece and basically get it to pop in and then pop back out at just the right spot to get the tabs into the slots. So, you know, that made it a little more difficult uh, in terms of uh, uh, assembling it. But in the end, the final piece actually is pretty sturdy. It's a lot more sturdy than I thought it was going to be, especially the center piece seemed kind of flimsy until we get all of the support structure around it. Um, over here, every one of these little rectangles is another piece that had to be added in. And I'm not sure why. I mean, we could have laser etched that detail in and it would have looked just fine. I'm not sure why they had to do that, but they did. So it just seems to be a little extra work. I do like the uh, detail here on the inside of the cannon on both ends, really. Um, it does kind of, uh, this does kind of look like a red scope lens. And this does uh, indeed appear to be, you know, a cannon getting ready to fire. So that's quite nice. Uh, and some of the little colored details around the edge of the cannon. It really just kind of makes it pop a little bit 
and makes it stand out as opposed to a solid black piece. All in all though, uh, I think the model is definitely coming along quite nicely. Uh, I'm happy with it thus far. As I mentioned, this is seven and a half hours into the build. Uh, and we're going to have to call it on this video for now. And we'll begin the torso in the next video. So I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Have a great day.